So we've talked about balancing nuclear reactions. We've talked about all the different ways that these nuclear reactions can fall apart. One of the things people are often really concerned about, though, is what's that going to do to me? What is the radiation from these things going to do to me? Because you think about Chernobyl and other nuclear reaction accidents, Three Mile Island, and, and you hear about these horrible things that happen for, for years and years afterwards. I mean, Chernobyl is never really going to be a place where anybody wants to live because there's all this nuclear products there that I don't want to be near and nobody else can be near and in many cases literally can't be near because they just die from the effects of it. So what we're going to talk about next is a little bit about radiation, what it does to you, how harmful it is, how much you can be exposed to, and hopefully we can clear up a little bit about what you think about radiation, because it turns out it's not quite as bad as most people think it is. So one thing, what happens when radiation hits you? Well, it turns out there's not a good answer to that because it depends on the type of radiation that you're trying to talk about. Let's talk about alpha particles first. What is an alpha particle? Well, if you remember, an alpha particle is a helium. It's a 4,2-He. It's got two protons, two neutrons. It's actually a fairly large atom on the scale of atoms and other things that we're going to be talking about in nuclear decay. And so this fairly large thing kind of lumbers in and tries to hit you. What's going to happen? Well, it turns out that because it's large and it moves relatively slow, it's actually just going to hit your skin and pretty much be absorbed by your skin, by the outer layers of your skin, the dead layers of your skin, as opposed to um, actually going and penetrating into your body anywhere. And in fact, if you want to protect yourself from alpha particles, you just hold up a little piece of paper. You hold up a little piece of paper, alpha particles will actually be absorbed by that piece of paper. So they aren't really all that harmful, and even if they do get on you, the damage they do is relatively minimal. So let's look at what it looks like in a little table here. We're going to talk about an alpha particle, which is this column here. How far can it travel in the air? Two to four centimeters. Two to four centimeters, I mean, that's like, you know, hold up your hand, fingers like that. That's not very far. So if there's something over on a desk emitting alpha particles and you're standing a few feet away, chances are you're not being hit by that many alpha particles. And so it's not really probably too much of a problem. Now, don't go out and seek out things that are emitting alpha particles, but it's probably also not going to hurt you all that much. The funny thing is, if you look, watch movies and other things that talk about nuclear reactions, they walk around with these little machines that go and those are called Geiger counters. And what Geiger counters are counting is the only thing they know how to count is alpha particles. And so when they walk up and they go brr, brr, and everyone starts to panic because, you know, they're all going to die, turns out they're talking about one of the least destructive forms of radiation possible, and chances are they aren't all going to die. Tissue depth, 0.05 millimeters. 0.05 millimeters. That's how far it goes into your skin if it hits you. And I don't know about you, but 0.05 millimeters is pretty hard to think about because an ant is about a millimeter high. And so you're talking five one hundredths of an ant. That's, that's very small. It's like an ant's leg, maybe. So that's how far it's going into your skin. It's not penetrating very far. Paper, clothing is going to protect you from that. Uh, Radium-226 being a source of those if we need to produce those for reasons. And sometimes we do. And we'll talk about kind of ways that we use nuclear radiation uh, in another video later. All right, so moving on to from alpha over to a beta particle. What's a beta particle going to do? Well, if you remember, a beta particle, 0 minus 1e, it's an electron. Now, electrons are much, much smaller than alpha particles. They're probably going to be moving faster. And since they're small, they can squeeze through things a little bit better. So they're not going to be stopped by the outer layer of your skin. What are we going to do? Well, let's look at this column here for beta particles. In the air, they're going to go about 200 to 300 centimeters. Now, how big is that? Well. A six foot person is about 200 centimeters tall, two meters tall. And so, you know, talking about six feet, 12 feet, somewhere in that range is how far a beta particle is going to go. Certainly a whole lot farther than an alpha particle, but also relatively limited distance. If you're standing, you know, 50 feet away, you're probably not going to be too harmed by something emitting uh, beta particles. Tissue depth, four to five millimeters. Okay, so we're getting to half a centimeter there. That's not insignificant. That's enough to get into live tissue. All right, 0.05 millimeters alpha particles is all going to be hitting dead stuff on the outside of your skin. 
But four to five milliliters, that's enough to get to live tissue. So beta particles can do a little bit of damage in your body. But if you want to protect yourself, you just wear things that are four to five millimeters thick. You wear heavy clothing, lab coats, gloves, that'll help protect you. And we talked earlier about carbon-14 being a source of beta particles. Our last one, gamma. Do you remember what gamma is? Gamma, and you can see they write it a little fancier than I do. Gamma, it was just energy. Now, you look at gamma rays, they're going to travel about 500 meters in air on average. That, that's a long ways. So gamma particles, they can travel really far. If you want to know how far they go, they go 50 centimeters or more through your body. Now, for most of us, if we turn sideways, our body is less than 50 centimeters. So if you look at this arrow up here that they drew, the gamma particle can literally just go right through us. And you're like, great, just goes right through us, no, no problem whatsoever. But if it can go right through us, it turns out it can also hit anywhere inside of us, including our vital organs that are a little bit more sensitive. So gamma particles have the ability to do a lot of damage because one, they're really, really high energy. Remember, that's the highest energy light we talk about in the electromagnetic spectrum. And two, they can penetrate anywhere in the body. So if you're going to be exposed to radiation and, you know, don't go seeking it out or anything like that, Gamma radiation is the worst kind because it really can do a whole lot of damage. If you want to protect yourself from gamma radiation, that's when you go down into your bunker, lead, thick concrete, and uh, technetium-99, metastable, is something that we can use to produce that. So there's a little bit of information about these different types of particles and how they penetrate our body and a little bit about what kind of damage they can do to our body. The next thing we're going to talk about is a little bit about the units people use for measuring radiation. We're not going to go into any detail on these. and In fact, I'm not even going to test you on these, but I want you to have seen them because when you are in a health field or go to a hospital or go to an imaging center, they might have this information on there. They might talk about it. Some of my children have had some sort of procedures done where they were exposed to radiation and the reports that I got listed how many millirems they were exposed to. So what's a millirem and what does it mean? And so we're going to talk a little bit about it. So it turns out when you're trying to measure radiation, there's a few different ways to measure it depending on what you're looking for. If you're looking for the total radiation, well, let me get my A there. If you just want to know how much stuff is coming off of there, it doesn't matter where it goes, how far it goes, what it does to people, the total radiation coming off, one unit that people will use is the Becquerel, abbreviated BQ. And one Becquerel is one disintegration per second. So one Becquerel, one dis disintegration per second. Which means if I, I had an object there and I said it was emitting 10 Becquerels, that means 10 times per second it would be emitting particles, they have alpha particles, beta particles, protons, whatever it is that it emits, 10 times per second it would be doing that. Going in all directions, maybe not going very far, but just the total number. Now it turns out a Becquerel is a pretty small amount of radiation, and so there's another unit that people use, which is the Curie, which is abbreviated CI, and that's 3.7 times 10 to the 10th disintegrations per second. That's a much, much larger number. In fact, you don't want to be exposed to a Curie of radiation. And Curie is named after Madame Curie, who was the discoverer of nuclear radiation quite by accident. She was trying to develop some film, and uh, it was exposed even though it wasn't exposed. And she eventually figured out it was because there were some rocks that she had that were radioactive and emitting particles that could go through her uh, box that held her um, films. So those are ways of measuring total radiation coming off, a Becquerel and a Curie. But what if you want to know how much was absorbed by the body? how much that radiation was absorbed by the body. Then you might use a unit called the RAD, which stands for Radiation Absorbed Dose. 
radiation absorbed dose. And we're not gonna go into detail, but it's basically related to the amount of energy that your body absorbs per gram of material. It's not commonly used, because there's another one that we use a lot more commonly, but you'll also might run across a gray, abbreviated GY, which is related to the rad and is also related to a kilogram of body tissue as opposed to a gram of body tissue. But again, these aren't as commonly used because what people usually care about is what is it gonna do to me? And that's when we use a different set of units. So the effect on the body. What is the effect of absorbing this radiation on my body? And here we get the most common unit that you'll see is the REM. And this is the radiation equivalent in humans. And what the REM does is it takes into account the damage that a nuclear particle can do. So you'll get maybe, I'm just gonna make up some numbers, 10,000 alpha particles can hit you and they wouldn't do the damage that one gamma particle would do if it hits you. And REMS will take that into account. So REMS is actually a really good way of measuring the effect on the human body because it says, hey, if you get hit by a little of this radiation, it can do a lot of damage, or you can get hit by a lot of this other radiation, and it's unlikely to do any damage. And so that is a very common unit, and you'll often see it also reported in milli-REMS. Remember that milli is just one one-thousandth of a REM. And not as common, but you might see it, is the sievert, abbreviated SV, and it is also related to REMS, it's 100 REMS is one sievert, but again, not as commonly used. This is by far the most common one, and we'll see in a little while what kind of doses are we exposed to by different tests we run in the hospital or things like that. So. Those are our different units, and again, most common is the REM. And it, it, the reason it is is because it tells us what the damage is to our body. Now, as I kind of implied earlier, people are pretty scared of nuclear radiation. Nobody goes by and looks for nuclear radiation to be exposed to. And in general, that's because you're like, hey, look, there's this, this way of measuring the damage it does to me, so I sh really shouldn't expose myself to it. And you're absolutely right. Don't go and expose yourself to radiation on purpose. That's not a good idea. But at the same time, people don't generally know how much radiation they're exposed to on a daily basis or a weekly basis or a yearly basis. So I want you to just pause for a moment, maybe after I, after I say this next couple sentences, and try to take a guess for me. How much radiation do you think you're being hit by? And by radiation, I mean products of nuclear radioactive decay, alpha particles, beta particles, gamma particles, protons, and neutrons that are a result of spontaneous nuclear decay. Not radiation as in like your cell phone, people worry about the radiation from your cell phone, which by the way, you don't really need to worry about. And um, they were, you know, radiation from the sun, of course, light, light hitting you, sunscreen, all that kind of stuff. No, no, not that kind of radiation. I'm talking about actual stuff from nuclear radioactive decay. How much is hitting you? Now, as a kind of thought exercise, you might be like, hey, if I had $20 and I offered you $20 to be hit by a thousand counts of radiation, how many people would raise their hand? And my experience is there's relatively few people would, but there's usually a few people out there that raise their hand. I say, okay, great. How about $20 for 10,000 counts? And the number of hands generally goes down. Maybe one or two people are like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. So well, how about a million counts? Who will be exposed to a million counts of radiation? The same, same radiation that nature exposes you to over who knows what period. We'll, we'll find out in a moment. A million counts. Usually by that time, there's, there's no hands or may, maybe one hand of somebody who, who really needs 20 bucks. Because you're like, hey, a million counts of radiation, that sounds like a lot of radiation. In fact, most people who guess at how much radiation we're exposed to guess that they're you know, tens or twenties per day, tens or twenties per year. But it turns out if you do a kind of a relatively basic calculation to estimate how much radiation we're naturally exposed to, right? And radiation looks like this to most people, right? Huge signs that say, danger, you're gonna die from this stuff. Are you gonna die from just a little? The answer is no. Because 
on a daily basis, in fact, on a second by second basis, you're exposed to about 90,000 counts of naturally occurring radioactive decay particles. 90,000 per second. So the time that it took me to say that sentence a few times was well over a million. Right? So that million counts of radiation for 20 bucks, that's the equivalent of you know, 12 seconds of exposure. It's not a whole lot. But most people don't realize that. So where is all this radioactive particles coming from? I mean, is it the government doing it to us? Is it, is it you know, like our enemies doing it to us? Where is all of this coming from? Well, it turns out the primary sources of your radiation exposure are the ground. The ground is exposing you to lots of radiation. So, okay, I'm going to climb up to a tall building and be far away from the ground. Okay, so air, water, and food. That's actually more than the ground in terms of exposure to radiation. So how do I remove that exposure? Do I stop eating, stop drinking, and stop breathing? Well, see, that won't go very well. Uh, the radiation exposure is certainly much less than the uh, not having food, water, or air to breathe. The next one that's actually even more is cosmic rays. And what's a, what's a cosmic ray? And by the way, it sounds better if you say it that way, because if you just say cosmic rays, it doesn't sound like much. So what are these cosmic rays? It's the sun, primarily. The sun is this giant nuclear reactor putting out all sorts of crazy stuff. Most of it gets lost in space. The rest of it gets absorbed by our upper atmosphere. Thank you, upper atmosphere. But some of it comes down through there and hits us as cosmic rays. So like, okay, well, I'm going to live in a bunker. Well, what's a bunker made of? It's made of concrete. And wood, concrete, and brick gives us more than any of these other sources. There's naturally stuff occurring. And the rocks that occur in those things are naturally radioactive. So those doses that we're giving to you are in millirems. You remember that was the most common unit we're going to run across. It takes into account all the different types of radiation. And this is on a per year basis. So, so you're getting 20 millirems per year from the ground, 30 millirems from air, water, and food, 40 from cosmic rays, and 50 from wood, concrete, and brick. Wow, it seems like a whole lot of radiation exposure, and yet most of us don't die. So it's great. We're fine. Normal amounts of radiation exposure, our bodies are used to it. Our bodies can work around that and fix problems and things like that. And mostly it's not a problem for most people. So <clears throat> what kind of other radiation exposure do we have in our lives? Well, medical. Right? We might go out and we might get ourselves a chest x-ray or a dental x-ray. Those are going to give us 20 millirems. A mammogram, 40. A lumbar spine x-ray, 70. An upper gastrointestinal tract x-ray, 200. And I've always wondered why they put that on the chart. And the only thing I could think of, that's probably the highest number they can find. So an upper gastrointestinal tract x-ray, it gives you 200 millirems of exposure. And you're like, well, you know, chest x-ray, that's the same as the ground. I mean, that's not a whole lot, right? Because the ground's exposing me to 20 millirems of chest x-ray. So... Why don't I just get chest x-rays all the time? And they're just, yeah, whatever, go ahead, get a chest x-ray. And the answer is, remember, the ground's giving you 20 millirems per year. How long does a chest x-ray take? A chest x-ray is now a fraction of a second. So in a fraction of a second, you're exposing yourself to as much radiation as you are exposed by the ground for an entire year. So yes, we don't want to be exposing ourselves to these. The nice things about dental x-rays is they're very focused. So yes, it's all out of exposure, but it's in a very limited area. Mammograms over a li relatively limited area. Um, but some of these upper gastrointestinal tracts, you're going to get exposure over a wider range. So there's some medical exposures. Similar looking numbers, but remember they're much shorter in time. What's other radiation exposure? People often worry about nuclear power plants being near them. Your average exposure from a nuclear power plant, 0.1 millirems per year, significantly less than the ground gives to you. So don't worry too much about nuclear power plants if they're working properly. If they're not working properly, worry about them, absolutely. But if they're working properly, they're not exposing you to a whole lot of radiation. Air travel, wow, why is air travel on this list? I mean, what is it, is an airplane just radioactive naturally? And the answer is no. 
But you remember, those cosmic rays that come in are mostly absorbed by our upper atmosphere. So what do we do if we're on an airplane? We go above the atmosphere and we're exposing ourselves to more cosmic rays on purpose. So, you know, I still travel by air when I need to. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's not a huge amount of exposure. It's less than the ground gives you every year. So don't worry about it. Television, it's probably an old list back when televisions were made of glass and a, a television this big would be about that deep. Uh, we don't have to worry about too much. Radon, wow, that's a big number and it's got a star. Varies wildly, wildly, widely. Why would it vary widely? Well, it turns out radon is made by nuclear radioactive decay of other things that are more common in some places in the world than others. Uh, we live in California, and there's not a whole lot of radon problems in California. There's not a lot here, but in the Midwest, there is. The thing about radon is it is a gas. It's one of the noble gases, but it's very heavy. It's very, very heavy. And so normally it sinks in air. And what happens is in the Midwest, not only do we have more radon, but it sinks. And a lot of people in the Midwest have basements. And in those basements, right, they need them for um, tornadoes and other things. But in those basements, radon gas can pile up and it can be a real problem. Now, the nice thing is all you have to do is put a fan in there and blow out the air and the radon gas will come out. But <clears throat> you do have to pay attention to that. And if you know anyone in the Midwest or you live in the Midwest, there's a good chance you have a radon detector down in your basement. So here we go, all sorts of exposure from these kind of things. And, and you're really asking yourself, I mean, when people see this, they're like, water? Water is radioactive? The answer is, yeah, little bits of that water are radioactive. So when you take a nice cup of water, I've got some tea here, not some water. Mm. Get a nice sip of that. I just drank something that is exposing me to radiation. I'm not worried about it because it's naturally occurring. It's been occurring since as long as the Earth has been here that air, water, and food has radioactive stuff in it, and it's okay. Just because something has radioactivity in it doesn't mean it's bad. What you want to avoid is things that have lots of radioactivity in them, more than average radioactivity, which is not stuff you're going to run across on a regular basis. So yes, air, water, and food, ground, they all have radiation. It's okay. You look at the person near you, they're radioactive too. They're emitting radioactive particles. And guess what? You're radioactive. You're emitting radioactive particles out into the world. You're part of that 90,000 counts per second. And it's okay because it's normal amounts of radiation. Now, people do still worry about it. They're like, okay, here are my radiation exposures, 20, 30, 40, 50. What's gonna kill me? I really, I just really need to know what's gonna kill me. So there's another table that you can look at lethal doses for radiation for some different life forms out there. And it's called the LD50. For those not familiar with that term, it means the lethal dose in 50% of the population. Just means if I take dogs and I expose them to 300 rems of radiation, half the dogs will die and half will not in a certain period of time. So it's essentially what people consider the lethal dose. Now you can see 300, well 300, let me, let me look back over here. We're talking, you know, 30 from food. So a 10th of food or food is a 10th of what can kill a dog? I mean, should more dogs be dying? And the answer is in the units here. If you notice, these were in millirems and these are in rems. So these numbers are a thousand times bigger than the numbers in the previous column. So that 30 from air, water, food is actually 0.0 three in this uh, thing. So it's not a lot of radiation exposure. So a dog, 300 rems of radiation, a human, 500 rems of radiation, a rat, 800. So the rats do better in the uh, event of a nuclear war than we do. The bacteria do really well. And of course, you've probably heard that the only winner of a global nuclear war are the cockroaches because insects can be exposed to 100,000 rems of radiation before half of them die. Why? Because they're Systems are so simple. There's, there's very little to break down in an insect. Um, you, you screw something up by exposing it to radiation, not much happens. You screw up part of our brain exposing it to radiation, part of our vital organs, and we have all sorts of different ways that we can fail from exposure to radiation that the insects don't. So, very large amounts of radiation that you need to be exposed to, not stuff you're gonna be exposed to on a daily basis by any means from air, food, water, air travel or anything like that because they're a thousand times what's going to kill you is over a thousand times 
uh, <coughs> what you're exposed to on an annual basis. So that's our discussion of radiation, measuring units, and what it can do to you. Most of this discussion is not stuff you will be tested on. I tell you that at the end. But I think it's useful to know and useful to understand that we are constantly being exposed to radiation. We shouldn't seek out extra radiation exposure. That's certainly not good for us. But just because something has radioactivity in it doesn't make it necessarily bad because you're radioactive and it's okay. Have a good day.